Hello folks, all at the one here. Welcome to another video. I was recently at a trade show in Germany and um, was walking around the uh, knife section <coughs> and happened to come across some Enzo knives. Uh, now I've heard and read very good reports about these knives. Um, there are a couple of models that I'd heard about in particular. Uh, one of them was the uh, Enzo Trapper which uh, sort of looks like this and is available in many different um, with many different scales etc and v various um, grinds including Scandi and uh, secondary bevels etc um, so I heard a lot of good reports about that knife um, also heard a lot of good reports about the knife which I'll be talking about in this video which was the PK70 which uh, sort of looks like this. Oh, sorry, that's the pill folder. I can't actually get it into shot, but there we go. That's the PK70. Again, available in various um, materials and grinds. Uh, so I've heard a lot of good reports about this uh, company and uh, got talking to the guy on the stand, and it turns out that it was the designer himself. And I was speaking a little bit to Dennis about the way he came up with the knife design. And uh, anyway, uh, ended up buying one. As I said, they are available in uh, several different uh, scales and steels. I think it's a choice of D2 or this steel, which is CPM S30V, which is the same steel used in my... EDC of choice for the last few months which is the Spyderco dog tag folder so I know I'm familiar with with the steel and uh, it's a definitely a good steel with great edge retention and a decent amount of resistance to uh, corrosion so as you can imagine it was nice to be walked through the uh, knife design by the creator himself and uh, decided to go for the green micarta scales in fact this is uh, it looks more brown to me maybe I'm going color blind in my old age um, but definitely more of a brown tinge to it than green but I um, really liked the finish on there um, there were some other choices I'll just read those back to you So there was a choice of um, carbon fiber finish, uh, scales, sorry, uh, G10 uh, with titanium or indeed the uh, black G10 or green micarta. Uh, I did quite like the look of the uh, carbon fiber one, that had quite an attractive finish to it as well. But I just went for a more kind of classic design with this uh, green micarta. Another reason I was drawn to this particular model is that it's slightly thinner this way uh, with the Makata scales, it was the thinnest one there. So just before we have a close up look at the knife we'll just go over some of the specs. Uh, it has an overall length of 160mm when open and that goes down to 92mm when closed. It has a weight of 80 grams, blade length of 70mm. Uh, thickness blade thickness of two and a half millimeters uh, the steel used as I said is CPM s 30 V and this is the uh, Scandi ground version uh, a blade shape that I'm familiar with and like uh, it has a satin finish and it is in fact a slip joint um, with a with a blade length of sub three inches therefore making it UK legal carry um, it features a stainless steel pocket clip with countersunk screws. I have actually removed that because I have no need for the pocket clip generally. So but it can easily be reattached. The clip is not reversible and is designed for tip down carry I 
beg your pardon, let's tip up Kerry. So just two size six, yep, size six Torx screws and uh, attaches very nicely there. Not excessively deep, but it is fairly stiff, so it should sit in the pocket nicely up to about this point, but uh, does the job. So looking up close, let's have a look at the finish on there. As you can see the knife can be fully disassembled, features stainless steel liners, very nicely balanced with the V right in the middle where you want it. So basically when opening and closing the knife the edge, the sharp edge uh, does not rub against the liners therefore making it blunt eventually feels extremely solid build quality is very very high no gaps anywhere just very nicely finished as the uh, literature says it's uh, one that you can hand down to your children and grandchildren nicely balanced features a thumb nick to uh, open the blade very very solid lock up there uh, closing it um, you have to put quite a lot of pressure on it in fact this is probably the stiffest uh, slip joint I've used so far to date it does have a secondary stop position right here in the closing process and doesn't actually snap back until it's fairly close to being closed sort of there so provides lots of safety for a slip joint knife as you'd expect comes at a very very high level of sharpness have yet to need to sharpen this but really nice effortless there definitely um, a lot bigger to what I've been using recently so there is obviously extra bulk and weight carrying it around in the pocket but that's a sacrifice that you have to make if you want to carry this knife Obviously, there's a lot more cutting power here and a lot more precision. Let's have a little look at the uh, blade itself. Just give it a quick polish. Very nice, precise scandy grind, really nicely balanced, not that this shows you much but take my word for it the V is right in the middle which is always a good sign. I like the uh, shape of the blade too, nice and sharkish. As to the um, steel itself, as I said, it is a really nice quality powdered steel <coughs> with a good amount of corrosion resistance and definitely a huge amount of edge retention. 
Um, it is a little harder to sharpen than my favourite steel, which is uh, usually a VG10, especially for an EDC knife. Um, but you know, that means I'm not sh having to sharpen it as often as I would a VG10 blade. However, it takes a little bit more effort to sharpen the steel. Fit and finish, as I said, is very high, perfectly smoothed off plain edges. Can't see many hot spots being created, not from from that anyway. Substantial handle for such a small knife, so uh, I think it's comfortable for slightly prolonged use. Definitely a useful little pocket knife. So I think you'll agree that's enough knife pawn for one sitting. As you may have observed, there is in fact a lanyard hole at the back here. So it just makes it easier to pull in and out of your pocket. And obviously when the knife is closed it does not <coughs> interfere with the lanyard hole. So it won't cut through the lanyard accidentally. So overall, what are my impressions of the PK-70? Um, it's a substantial UK legal slip joint folding knife built to uh, pretty exacting standards, I would say. I believe it is actually manufactured in um, Taiwan. Uh, very tough, substantial slip joint mechanism. Does take a lot of effort so as far as I'm concerned that makes it safer to use generally nice ergonomics feels comfortable I think the blade is a nice length and is useful uh, for me particularly in the uh, Scandi ground version as this leans towards outdoorsy tasks so in a pinch can be used for a spot of bushcrafting. I like this uh, supposedly green micarta. If anyone thinks this is green, please let me know. But I could swear this is actually brown. <laughs> Not a big issue. I think the colour is nice. And uh, overall aesthetics are really good too. Which is first, which is what first drew my eye to uh, to these knives. As you'd expect, I will be putting this through good use over the course of several weeks to months, and I'll get back to you with a full review at some point. So these were my initial thoughts, desktop review on the Enzo PK70 with my Carter Scales Scandinavian ground with the SV30 steel. Don't forget to check out my online store Alpha Bushcraft and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you found this video useful and or entertaining. Your help and support are genuinely appreciated. This is All Outdoor One signing out for now. Thanks for watching. Take care.